So everybody watching this probably is paranoid about standing up in front of their classroom in eighth grade and having to give a speech, right? So now imagine you're sitting in front of GMs and head coaches in the NFL and you're being just grilled on questions. That's the NFL Combine. We want to create a version of that. We hear it, we say it, we believe it. But can we see it? The effect. When the game's online, you can see it in a person's eyes. It's noticeable. The it factor. They make the players around them better. The it factor. Welcome to the it factory. Adding the NFL combine style interview this year was great in terms of getting to know these kids, what makes them tick, uh, seeing their confidence level. And it's another uncomfortable setting. It's a constant stream of questioning for eight minutes, expecting them to be able to handle another stressful, anxiety-ridden environment. You can just tell by how much is he sweating and what he's doing with his fingers. How uncomfortable is he? Going in, I was pretty nervous. I, I had no idea what to expect. I've never been inside of an NFL combine room or anything like that. What is one thing that, if you could, you'd like to change about yourself? I'm constantly, like you said, even though I'm not supposed to do it, I'm constantly fighting with myself. So mentally, I judge myself the hardest. I'm hardest on myself. And I wish I, I, I wish something I need to work on going forward is to not be so hard on myself. If I mess up, get over it, get on going to the next play. Keep in mind that they're still figuring out who they are. They're still figuring out the game. They're still figuring out what is appropriate as a response. You're gonna hit adversity and you just have to kind of embrace it. Before, I was just kind of let it get me down, but then I realized it's a part of it. You have to welcome it and you have to overcome it. You, you, he answered that question like with, a, with an answer like, right. no, I, I, yeah, that's a pro answer. Yeah, well done. This is a great training ground to be bold, to be clear, and to learn around people that want to help. It's good to be on the other side of this. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's really cool. I had 11 in a row at the combine. Who happened to be sit there? Oh, the guy that was just taking number one overall in the draft, Jared Goff. And by the way, he's grilling them on these questions. There's so many people in there. You're not roaming your eyes around the room. You're making eye contact and answering your question. Next question, I look over and it's Jared Goff. I'm like, you're in a bus with a bunch of people going down a windy road, snowy, and the bus loses its brakes. Where on the bus do you want to be sitting? Probably the driver's seat, because you're the person who can solve the problem and be in control. I guess that was a pretty good answer, and he laughed, and I said it and shook his head. Like, he might have answered the same question, or somebody might have asked him that when he was going through the process. So this was a question I was actually asked about, what, two months ago? Being able to look back on that, something that I'm thankful I went through, and I think it's the ability to react in a situation that you really haven't prepared for. Do you ever get tired of people asking about your family? Sometimes, yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I love it, though. I love them, so it's, it's not a super big deal, and I know they get it, too. So it's not something I hate, but sometimes it just, when it, oh, only when someone overdoes it, it gets a little annoying. What's your favorite part of this whole process, and what are you trying to get out of it? I just want to get better. I want to get better for myself and for my team, because like Coach Dofer said, it's not about you. It's about making other people around you better. When you talk about making people better, you went through some adversity four years ago. You became the man of the house. How has that helped you on your journey as a leader? You know, the first six months after my dad passed away, I was not a leader. Sam loses his dad when he's 13. The moment I thought I will never see my dad again, I automatically dropped. My body just gave out. And ever since that time, it's kind of been a process to learn who I am. The worst part of them losing their dad was to watch them be sad. It was really, really hard. And we still miss him, of course. Do you embrace that pain? Like, do you talk about your dad? Do you still look at pictures of him? Do you have the memories? Or have you kind of packed it away and you just don't want to deal with it? Most days, I probably do push it away. I kind of look past it. When I lost him, I was torn inside. I had no reason to be in this world. I hated everything. I hated life. He was my best friend. He taught me everything. And then I realized I can't live my life like this, and I'm going to have to get over it eventually. And so from then on, I realized that my family's feeling the same way, and I got to pull them out of that. The only way that my brother and sister and my mom are going to succeed if there is that stability. And I want to be that rock that keeps them together and makes them move in a positive direction. So um, how do you think I've done taking care of Jake and Morgan and our family? 
I think he's done amazing. He has been the rock for all of us. And of course, I try not to, you know, put that kind of pressure on him because you want a kid to be a kid. Hi. Hey. How was volleyball? Good. He just has a strength about him and an attitude of everything's going to be okay. He's an amazing kid. He really is. With the given situation that I've had, it's not just learning how to deal with yourself, it's learning how to deal with life because I've been through the, the worst of the worst. That's one of the worst things that you can ever go through. And knowing that I can get through that in a positive way, that, that gave me confidence to know that I can do that with whoever it is in whatever situation they're in. Great. Thanks, man. That was awesome. Thanks so much. Thanks for answering hard stuff. Yes, sir. That's hard stuff, man. Thank you. I think it's a lesson for all of us that when life gets hard and throws us things that we're not prepared for, embrace them and always look at the positive. Thank you. Joey Roberts came up with a great idea for the combine interviews. He's like, let's have one question that we ask all the kids, and let's let's find a question that kind of digs into their psyche a little bit and where they kind of feel like the pecking order is. If you were starting a program right now and you could not choose yourself as a starting quarterback, which of these starting quarterbacks would you choose? I would choose Hunter Johnson. Hunter? Johnson. Hunter. Hunter. Probably Hunter. Hunter throws a pretty ball, and I think that guy's a stud. Hunter Johnson. Why? That kid can flat out ball. <laughs> <laughs> you're not the first that yeah, said that. that. Hunter Johnson, I mean, that's the one guy that I think, even though I know he wasn't there with us this morning and stuff like that, but that dude, he's a baller. I mean, I have so much respect for him. Out of the 24 kids, Hunter Johnson was the predominant answer. Coming into everything, I was like, oh man, it's gonna be a big weekend, just gotta get through it. But I feel like I was able to to really focus football when I was doing football, and then once I got to the track, ended up running pretty well. For Hunter Johnson to come out a day early, get his Saturday combine uh, workout in on Thursday. That's a dime! Boom! Throw again on Friday with all the kids when they get here. And then get on a red-eye flight Friday night from Los Angeles, California, fly across the country to Indianapolis, Indiana, and run in the state track meet. You don't see that. And to have that overwhelming response from his peers after only being with them for, for half of the first two days was, was very impressive. Just landed in LA again. Glad to be back. Headed to the field right now, ready to compete. It's easy to relate to all these guys because they're you know, all top tier guys and we all handle the same stuff. So I hope they think I'm a, a person that's easy to be around. Um, you know, I, I like to think of myself as, as a humble person and I let my, my play do the talk. We spoke to a couple of folks at your high school. Okay. And one of them told us that you had a problem stealing. Stealing? Yeah. Really? Yeah. We wanted to see how kids would respond if we messed with them a little bit. And Sean, to his credit, he didn't I'm, freak I'm out. Steal. I'm just, I, don't, I think that's a lie. I'm totally honest with you. We had some fun with them. We didn't do that to everybody. There's certain kids you know you can. Sean's obviously a kid that loves to have fun, so it was good timing by Dr. Trevay. Good job, Sean. For the most part, kids killed it. Let's take Mac Jones, for instance. What company would you want to be the CEO of? I don't want to be an inheritor or of a big company. I just kind of want to make my own idea. I don't like to follow people. When you follow, you get stomped on. That's my motto. So, uh... <laughs> so there are certain guys that kind of flip the script, too. I'm 6'4". I mean, you drop back, same offensive line. Do you think we can see the same? I mean, if the line's six foot, then you'd probably see better. But the line's normally 6'5", so probably see the same. I totally agree with you. It was definitely one of the better things we've done because we got to know him in a depth that we hadn't before. You have to pick one or the other. What is better, competing or winning? Competing? I'm just a winner, you know? Losing is not in my DNA. Miles. Yeah, sit on down, bud. Not a lot of people know his story. He's overcome a lot. You know, his family was relocated after Hurricane Katrina. You know, Hurricane Katrina was something uh, none of us expected, you know? Uh, my parents told us to pack a few pairs of clothes and we'll be back. Um, a couple weeks later, come back to a lot full of sand, you know, lost a house, lost all the childhood pictures and everything, you know, the whole nine yards. Moved down to Fort Lauderdale, Florida and bought a boat to, you know, restart. 
Um, you know, talking about personal lives, emotions kind of take over. Yeah, I can tell. It just got kind of tough. Uh, my dad was commuting to New Orleans, you know, every week. You know, that, that's where his job was. Um, so it was literally my mom taking care of three boys at the time. You know, it was a difficult time. I knew Miles really worked through some emotional difficult times. One of the very first things he came to his mom and I and said, get me on a football team. And once we did get him onto football teams and kind of started living a little bit uh, more of a normal life at that time, they were in paradise. We lived there for three years, you know, probably the best three years of my life. You know, just special moments, you know, most families want to stay together. Um, my mom and dad have been married 36 years and uh, into a lot of ups and downs. Obviously, I want to get into the NFL, but being able to provide for the family that I will have, you know, that's um, my main goal. Once I realized that nothing can stop me. The thing that we've learned about Miles is his competitive nature is second to none. Intense. Jaw clenched. Miles Brennan promised us, I will make the 11. You know, I've kind of been the, the underdog um, throughout this whole recruiting process in general. Um, I come here, same thing type of deal, you know, it fires me up. And, you know, I'm going to earn that, that, that spot in Oregon, and I can promise you all that. Drop the mic and walked out. <laughs> There's so much fire in this place. <laughs> I feel it. Hey, Hair stood up on my arms when he walked out of the room. I'm like, yeah, that guy can lead my team. I love like learning new things, like like the state fish of Hawaii. Like the state fish of Hawaii, which like is the Huma Huma Nuka Nuka Of course, it is. Yep. Absolutely. Oh, gun show. Yeah. Did you see some push-ups in the hallway? You did, didn't you? You fucked up before you came out. <laughs> I should have, though. <laughs>